Hello, stampers and fellow paper crafters. It's Cindy Lynn with My Inky Fingers. Thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel and blog. I hope this video finds you safe and healthy. I happen to have been scrolling through Instagram the other day and I saw a card, I'll put it up here, that inspired me to make this card. I just love this rainbow background and I thought this is gonna be so, so easy to make and I didn't want to do an image on it, I wanted to do a sentiment. So the supplies you'll need to get out are three pieces of scrap paper, the silver glitter, a piece of white, and a uh, whisper white, and the black. Now I have three mats out here that are five and three eighths by four and an eighth, but I put one to the side because I'm not quite sure why I pulled out three, but nevertheless, so two mats, one for the front of the card, one for the inside of the card, and then your A2 top folding card. So I'm going to use the well said, I'm going to use the make me smile, and I'm going to use some dies for the U, but I'm also going to use this artisan textures to add some really sparkly texture to that, to the rainbow, and the um, hand lettered prose dies the stitched rectangle dies, and the layering circle die. So a few different steps in here. Now I am going to also use the pattern party stencils just because I wanted a nice um, crisp line for my blending. So I pulled this out. I didn't want to trust it to my to my um, post-it tape. And this here is reusable, right? So I figured I wouldn't waste as much post-it tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull out my, my post-it tape, but I'm going to use some temporary adhesive and I'm gonna just kind of temporarily adhere this to one of my grid papers that I've got folded in half there, just so it's not shifting and moving around. And I am gonna cover, now I already made one of these cards because I usually make one, right, before I film the video for the actual card. So I'll be reusing a lot of my post-it tape because it is highly reusable. So I'm just gonna cover two of the little clouds. Now I chose this side because it had the least amount for me to mask off. So I'm gonna cover those and there's the post-it tape that I use. That stuff is so amazing, I love it. And it goes such a long way too. Now I'm going to also use my T-square ruler because what I did is for the amount of colors I used and I'll tell you what they are as we go along. I kind of gauged out about three quarters of an inch per color. So I'm gonna use my T-square ruler corner to corner and then I'm just gonna stick my stencil underneath it so that I can make sure that all of my stripes for the rainbows are even. So once I've got that there, I'll place it at the three quarter mark and you can do any measurements you want. You, you know me, I don't measure, measure. I don't do, not often you see me mark anything off. It's all eyeball for this girl. So the first color I'm gonna use is the Flirty Flamingo. And I'm gonna leave this in real time for the first three um, stripes so that you guys can really get a good idea for how I'm doing it. And then I'll speed it up so that you're not here all day. So I'm gonna start really, really dark when I first lay down the Flirty Flamingo. Now. I did intend to make this a lot lighter as I went in towards the um, stencil there and it ended up being not quite as light as I wanted it to be, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put my flirty flamingo away and I'm gonna keep that dauber handy because we're gonna use that after we lay down the next color. So the next color is the real red. So I'm just gonna pull up the stencil. I'm gonna pull out my T-square ruler and I'm gonna put the measurement on the three quarter mark where the pink ends and then I'm going to just shift my stencil up and I'm eyeballing the angle and then I'm just depressing the tape just to keep it there. Now this is where I'm going to start bringing out my post-it tape to mask off the previous color. Now when I lay it down I want to be like a sixteenth of an inch into the white. I don't want it to go right along the line of the pink. I want there to be about a sixteenth of an inch white spot in between my colors so that I can go back and blend that off and you'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to pull out the real red and I'm going to ink up my dauber and I'm going to start with the darkest amount at the post-it tape on the top, lightening as I come towards the stencil. So 
again, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The harder you press with your foam dauber, the more ink you're going to transfer. And then the lighter that you press, the less ink you're going to transfer. So you can do this in circular motion or you can go back and forth. It's entirely up to you. So I've got dark up at the post-it tape, lightening off down towards the stencil. I'm going to pick that up and pull it out now. Now I'm going to lift that post-it tape, but I'm going to bring back the dauber from the Flirty Flamingo. And I'm not going to re-ink it. There's plenty of ink on there from the first application. And what I want to do now is very, very lightly, I want to go over that white space just so that it shows a transition in between the pink and the red. So I want the line to still be prominent, but I don't want it to be white. So now I'm going to come in with my T-square ruler again, lining it up corner to corner and learn from my mistake. Put your stencil down first. I don't know what I was thinking. I was like always trying to fit this stencil underneath my ruler rather than laying it down first. But nevertheless, I've got to make things complicated, right? So again, I measured a quarter inch from where the red ended to where I wanted to place my stencil. And now I'm just adjusting it because it, here's where it's all eyeballing. Um, for me anyway, if you want to get fancy schmancy and, you know, make little measurements and ticks on your card, go right ahead. But the only trouble is, is any pencil marks on your cardstock will be sealed underneath ink. You can't erase them. So I didn't want any pencil marks. So I'm just going in with the post-it tape I used on the last card and I'm just trying to do my best to lay that down about a sixteenth of an inch into the white away from the red and then I'm going to bring in my pumpkin pie and I'm going to just rinse and repeat. I'm going to make it dark where the post-it tape is right there and then I'm going to lighten up as I come in towards the stencil. So in hindsight um, I could have actually started a little further away from the top corner on the pink because I did leave quite a bit down in the bottom corner when it came to the purple. So you decide if you like that white space down in the corner or if you want to even your white space off. Um, again, I'm not so great with measuring, so I just, I just went with it. And it may not be perfect, but you know what? When it's perfect, it's not homemade anymore. So I'm happy with how the pumpkin pie looks now. So I'm going to put that one away. And I'm going to lift up the post-it tape, but I'm going to bring out the dauber from the real red because I want to blend off that white space again, right? So I don't need to re-ink. I'm just going to go in and very, very lightly just kind of blend that line a little bit so it's not so stark white. So I am going to speed up the video here, but I'm going to continue to show you each individual stripe. Um, I think that's important. I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut that out for you guys. So I'm going to line that up a quarter inch from where the orange ends. And then I'm going to tape it off and I'm going to bring in the Daffodil Delight. Now, if you look at the rainbow, um, the colors, if you look at the rainbow, the way they are laid out in the rainbow tend to blend well into the next color. So I tried to follow that exact order so that I didn't get any yucky, muddy colors, right? So I'm going to pull out a new piece of post-it tape here because if your ink on your post-it tape is not dry, it will transfer when you're blending. So I wanted to be sure that I wasn't transferring any color when I lay down my yellow because the yellow is the lightest color on here, right? So... I think I actually speed up the video after the yellow. Sorry. Oh, here we go. Now, now I'm going to go into speed mode. It was really funny because my dad was watching one of my videos the other day and um, he has stage four Alzheimer's. So he didn't quite grasp the concept that I really don't blend this fast or I really don't color that fast. He's like, holy cow, you're really fast at that. He's it's so endearing. It's adorable. But nevertheless, so there's the yellow done and peel that off bring in the pumpkin pie dauber and just kind of blend that off and the nice thing is you're going to do a lot of ink splatter and water splatter or not ink splatter water splatter blah, 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 try that again cindy lynn water splatter and embossing over top of this background so if you're not the world's best blender don't stress these water-based inks from stampin up dry back so nice 
you don't even really have to be 100% perfect because I'm certainly not. So don't stress about it if you don't think your blending looks perfect because it'll end up perfect at the end. It'll look fantastic. So I went in with the Granny Apple Green and then I picked up the Daffodil Delight Dauber, blended out that little white line. Now I'm measuring another three quarter inch from the green and I'm going in with the Bermuda Bay. So I'm going to use the same post-it tape that I used last time I used the Bermuda Bay. Now the yellow one, the reason why I pulled out a new one is because I blended the green over the yellow um, because green is darker than yellow and I wasn't worried about the transfer. So you'll get the hang of it as you go along. So now I'm going to pull that up, bring out the dauber from the Granny Apple Green and just blend that line out. And then three quarters of an inch from the Bermuda Bay, I'm going to put my stencil and then come in with the Pacific Point. And I've got to tell you, this is probably like my favorite blue ever. Like this is, I love this. I love this color. I love it, love it, love it. It's absolutely probably one of, it has to be hands down one of my favorites. So the Bermuda Bay Dauber blending out that little white line. And then last color, I'm going to go in with the Gorgeous Grape. And I'm just going to do the Gorgeous Grape right over the top of my post-it tape for the Pacific Point because the purple's darker and I'm not too worried about the blend and what's going to happen in there. So I'm just going to put that three quarters of an inch, tape it down, and then bring in... Now I had uh, some issue there because my tape wasn't actually on the grid paper so I brought in another piece of purple tape. Now what I want to do here is I want to blend out that line so be careful when you're blending your purple into that stencil because you're going to want to blend that line out. So I got my trusty water bottle and here we go the fun part. I'm going to take the little mechanism the spray mechanism and just keep splattering water and then I took the actual um, spray and sprayed the whole thing. Now I've already die cut these out here but I cut the circle out of the stitch shape and the YOU from the silver out of the hand lettered prose dies. So I'm not sure what happened to the footage for that, but I did die cut them out. So I'm just going to put a little bit of mono glue on those and then I'm going to carefully position those with keeping in mind that I'm going to want to fussy cut these out because I want the black shadow around my silver letters. So the O the skinny side goes on the left, touching the tag from the Y, or the tail from the Y. Now I'm going to use my de-statification tool to de-staticify my black paper and my sticky Versamark ink, and I'm going to ink that sentiment from the Well Said Stamps, and then I'm going to use my heat gun and melt that till it's nice and smooth and dry. And then I'm going to use the Label Me Lovely Punch and I'm going to cut out that sentiment so I've got it perfect. Now, I'm just going to go around the edge of this and what I did is I put down a whole bunch of embossing powder, if you saw there, because it's really hard to fussy cut black. Have you guys ever tried fussy cutting black? Ugh, it's awful. So the embossing powder helped me see better. And then I just sprayed it with some shimmer spray just to, to lighten it up so I didn't have all that dust. So now I'm going to go in with that Artisan Texture stamp and I'm just going to randomly kind of stamp it and I'm going to use the um, Shimmer White Embossing Powder. This stuff is incredible when it's melted. It is so stinking pretty. So I'm going to heat it and heat both sides of the paper just so that I prevent a lot of warping. But oh my gosh, I love the way that this looks. It just really finishes this off. Now, I pressed too hard on my stamp, so I got some outlines of the stamp. So I just brought in my eraser tool and it was perfect because it, it removes any embossing powder mistakes on your card. So I'm just going to add a few more of those splatters in different little spots. And you know what? There's no rhyme or reason to it. So you just put them where you want them. I'm going to go in and add a few more and emboss that up. Now, this is the, the layering circles dies. And I'm going to use the second largest. And I'm going to cut out the center of this card because we're putting a big circle over top of all of that hard work we did. So I'm going to cut that center out and I'm going to use it on the inside of my card. So there we have it. Now, 
one time, oh, and I wanted to mention too that when you run that through your die cutting machine, it really helps flatten it. Now, here's the little problem <laughs> I took a lunch break to make my dad some lunch and whatnot at the end of cutting that out. And when I came back, I thought I hit record and I didn't. So I'm going to tell you what I did. I put that rainbow background on some fun foam. And then I put that circle I cut out on the mat on the inside. And then I just trimmed around the outside of it. And then I threw on a couple clear frosted, um, clear epoxy droplets. So funny part is, is I glued my background on backwards on the card that you guys just watched me made make or upside down or whatnot and I didn't even notice it until I picked it up and I was like oh so this one I'm holding now I did the fun foam to layer the, the background on there but I put the rainbow the right way I mean is there a right or wrong way I don't know I could send this card to somebody and they'll never know the difference right so I'm not going to stress out about it so sorry I cut out the footage of me gluing it all together um I did flag the little make me smile there uh, sentiment and I just I didn't put any at uh, foam or anything on those I just glued them right onto that circle so thank you so much for visiting me today on my YouTube channel and blog stay safe stay happy don't get too bored craft lots and fill up your card stashes until I see you again take care